and that's Giphy that you see here. Um, oh, I can hear myself. Yes, test, test. Yes, that's better. So this is the Giphy interface. Uh, Giphy, you can download it from uh, the website giphy.org. Um, it works on Linux, on PC and Mac. Uh, it's a desktop application. Uh, and it's standalone. You just need to download uh, Gephi and, uh, and install it. It's uh, a couple of clicks. Uh, let's see if my setup works. It doesn't. <laughs> Great. Uh, why? I had to I had set up a couple of, let me check that right away. I had set up a couple of hotkeys to facilitate the zoom in uh, Gephi. And yeah, that should be okay. So why, let me check. Okay. Oh, maybe this one. Never mind. Okay, let's go with it. So this is the interface of Giphy. Uh, the, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you have three main panels in Giphy. The one we are in at the beginning is with the big uh, white window in the middle, is called the overview. Uh, this is where you can see your network uh, uh, graphically with uh, blobs representing uh, nodes and uh, and um, and lines uh, representing the the, the connections. Um, so this is where you have different panels around this window that uh, help you tweak the colors. Uh, resize the, uh, the nodes. This is where you can apply layouts. Uh, this is where you can uh, apply filters and, and uh, other different kinds of statistics. So, uh, so yes, I would say this is where most of the action uh, takes place. You have a second panel and I realize <laughs> I realize I did not uh, highlight my pointer my mouse pointer, so it makes it harder for you to follow. Let me check that very quickly. Yeah, this one. Yeah, you should see better now. So at the Top left of the screen, you can switch from the overview where we, ha where we are at the moment to the data laboratory. Oops. Okay, so at the moment it's empty, uh, but basically this is where you see uh, an Excel view of your network or a table view. This is where uh, you see the list of the nodes of your network and uh, you can also see the list of the ages of your network. Um, so this is practical when you want to have a kind of table manipulation of your network. And last, the preview. Uh, this is where you work on the interface. This is where you work on the appearance of your network 
to export it as as a as a picture, so as a PDF or SVG or PNG, these kind of things. So in order to uh, get all of that in a in a in a more concrete way, uh, let's go and use uh, let's open uh, a network. So as I said when I describe the session for today uh, and to make things a bit more uh, exciting and fun, uh, I've chosen a, a network which uh, I will not tell you uh, exactly everything about it. Uh, it's, a, it's a Twitter network uh, that um, represents uh, a network related to one particular account. The way this network has been built is uh, by looking at the uh, lists uh, this account, this Twitter account belongs to. So if you are familiar with Twitter, you might know that uh, as a user of Twitter, you can um, create lists of accounts. Um, this list can be public or private. And in this list, you add any account you want. So why do people uh, create lists? It's to uh, uh, basically organize uh, and curate the, the Twitter accounts they, they follow. One uh, possibility that this opens is to retrieve these lists through the Twitter API. And if you take, uh, if, and that's super useful because if you want to study the account of Twitter of uh, Barack Obama on Twitter, uh, what you can do is retrieve all the lists where Barack Obama is um, has been added, all the lists where Barack Obama belongs to as a Twitter account. And then you look at the other Twitter accounts in these lists. Uh, that can tell something interesting about Barack Obama because if, if the other accounts belong to the same list as Barack Obama, it's not completely random. The people who created these lists and who put the Twitter accounts in them had a, a reason or an intent. Uh, they followed some logic. And, and that's useful to basically reconstruct the links between a given uh, Twitter account, like the one by Barack Obama, and the, uh, and the other uh, accounts uh, that you might uh, be curious about. So this is the procedure that was followed to create the network that we are opening now. And the full procedure is, descri is described in, uh, in the paper that is listed in the resources. I, I just posted the link to the resources in the chat. And and the, 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 the game here is that I'm not going to tell you which Twitter account was, uh, was analyzed this way. Uh, we're going to look at the network around it. And um, you can let me know uh, if you guess which Twitter account uh, this is. So let me, uh, let me retrace my, step, my steps super quickly. What I was saying is that we were going to work on a, on a network which consists in a, uh, the Twitter accounts related to a mysterious Twitter account. Uh, how is this network built? It is built by looking at the lists that this mysterious account belongs to. As you may know or not know, the, uh, on Twitter, you can create lists. Uh, you do that just to help you curate your Twitter feed. Um, you create a list and you give it a name like, uh, you know, uh, famous, uh, famous persons. And you, you put uh, in it, you put the, the persons that are famous and that you follow. Well, it's a stupid example, but... Uh, and this list can be private or public. Uh, if they are public, 
it is possible to retrieve them through the Twitter API. And uh, I didn't, I mean, I was quite surprised to realize that there is a huge number of lists made by many, many uh, people. Some of these lists are completely uninformative and just spam, but many of these lists are super well curated on very specialized topics. So anyway, when the, the approach that was followed to create this network is to uh, uh, look, so we take this mysterious account, we retrieve the lists it belongs to. So you have people who created lists and they, they put this account in them. And then very simply, uh, we look at the other accounts in this list and we create a link between this mysterious account and its fellow list members, if you will. So that's the basic principle. Uh, in, uh, in practice, of course, that's much more complicated than that because you need to do a lot of cleaning and snowballing and uh, clever tricks to remove the noise and, and keep the relevant information. But the result is... Uh, um, is pretty strong and, well, uh, I mentioned that several times, but now if you can hear me, that's better. Uh, the link to the paper describing how we, we proceeded uh, uh, with co-authors, uh, colleagues at EMEON, uh, the reference to this paper is in this uh, document. So anyway, that's the result. And let's go and try if you can guess uh, which account this is. So it's 782 nodes uh, and 44,000 uh, yeah, 44, ages. What is the basic workflow in Giphy? So it's a personal matter. Everybody have their own uh, habits and practices. Uh, I, in my case, I always tend to uh, go and start with the fourth Atlas II layout. So what is a layout? A layout is a way to organize the nodes in your network, especially on the screen. As you see here, we did not apply a layout yet. So the organization on screen is super basic. All the nodes have been placed at the center of the screen. Uh, to apply a layout, you, you go as I just did uh, on the left panel, which is called layout. And there is a drop down menu offering you a menu of different kinds of layouts. Uh, some of them are super explicit, but others super, are super mysterious. The ones uh, I, I would suggest you to use is Force Atlas 2. Uh, I should add um, a reference to the paper describing uh, what it does, but basically Force Atlas 2 uh, tends to spread all the nodes uh, apart. You know, they, it basically uh, make them repulse each other. So all the nodes will basically, uh, they will try to get away from each other as, as far as away as they can, but not all of them will be able to do that. So the, lay the fourth Atlas layout would basically take all the nodes and, and uh, kind of explode them. But, and that's the clever trick, the nodes that are connected, they tend to be, they have an opposite force that applies to them. Two nodes, if they are connected with a link, they will be uh, pushed uh, next to each other. So, and if you take these two forces, the force that takes all the nodes and spreads them away, plus the, the force that brings together only the nodes, the pairs of nodes that are connected, then it tends to, and let's see that now, it tends to, uh, uh, to place uh, the nodes in particular fashion. So just to tell you what I just did, I just clicked on, uh, you know, run for Atlas 2. Uh, and then some, something like, you know, the, the network tended to disappear from the screen. So I just right clicked, I'm on a PC. 
I right clicked with the mouse and it allowed me to pan and 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 place the network back on in the center of the screen. Uh, there is an you can do that as well uh, with the icon I'm highlighting now now, uh, which does that automatically. So let me show you. If the you have lost the network, it has uh, drifted away. Uh, you can't see it on screen. Uh, if I'm if I'm lucky, just clicking on center on graph. Yeah, brings it back here. It's pretty useful. Something else you can notice is that the layout never stopped. It keeps it keeps computing. You know the the position of the nodes and trying to spread them apart and bring them back together if they are connected. And if your network is super big or if your computer is super slow, that can uh, uh, basically that can. Uh, uh, slow down uh, Giphy and the operations on your computer. So uh, you can, when nothing moves anymore, you can just stop the layout. So what happened is, is maybe it's, I don't know if, if, you are, if this is intuitive to you or uh, immediately or, or not, but uh, in, after some time practicing with Giphy, it seems super intuitive is that all the nodes that are that have a lot of connections one with each other will end up in the same regions of the screen like this this part here this other part here and the nodes that don't have a strong connection with the rest will be spread apart so and Maybe you can ask why is that useful? It is useful because in one click, I just got um, a clear sense that in this network we had maybe one, uh, we had like two com two big communities uh, and one which is a uh, much bigger than than the other one and a, a very small one here. Um, so now we want to investigate uh, what are these communities. You know, are they are they super different or not? So first step was layout, and we just did that. The second step is community detection, and that's what I just explained. We want to have a way to explore communities. Communities meaning subgroups in the network that that uh, you know that carries some unity uh, relative to the other nodes so you might ask we have this community detection already because you know the layout already showed us that these two and even this third one these three communities are distinct so we don't need community detection the layout performed it for us so that's true uh, but you know, let me zoom in this one. Uh, it seems pretty huge. So I would not be surprised or I would be interested in knowing whether this big community can be uh, uh, divided into sub communities. And the layout is not super useful here, right? Because it, it, it didn't um, separate them. So we're going to use a second um, a classic step in network analysis, which is uh, applying uh, a community detection or a clustering uh, algorithm. To do that, we switch to the statistics panel, which I try and point uh, here, statistics panel. And there you have the uh, modularity uh, uh, sub menu. So you just click on, well, you could use statistical inference as well, but modularity in my empirical uh, uh, judgment it produces um, results that are a, a bit more uh, interesting. So I just click on run. You have a couple of parameters there. Um, and we could detail them in the next uh, session, uh, but not for today. And you see that the algorithm is uh, 
working, you get a sense of, so modularity class is, a class is a group. So we detected uh, 10 groups and the red dots that you can hardly see, I guess, on the screen, the red dots just show us how many nodes per group. So the biggest group would be the group number six that has over 200 uh, nodes or Twitter accounts in it. And we have much smaller uh, groups. So we close this report and now we can, you know, look at these groups. We can look at them in two ways. We can switch to the data laboratory tab right there on the top left. And this is, so as I, as I explained, but I think the sound was, was uh, off. The data laboratory tab is a table view of your network. So the list of nodes, and you see that we have many details on them, like the user, the bio, their, you know, their Twitter bio, the language of the account. We have something called intensity score, and I, I refer you to the paper to see what we call an intensity score. The number of followers at the time of the data collection, the location, and since we applied the modularity algorithm, a new column has been added for every node, which is called modularity class. Modularity class means the group that the node belongs to according to uh, you know, the algorithm. So if I click on the header of the column, it ranks them. It ranks the nodes according to the group they belong. So we have you know, all the nodes belonging to the modularity class number zero, there are many of them, or oh, there are a lot of them. And then three, four, six to 10. So actually we have 11, uh, 11 classes or 11 groups. So we could you know, just eyeball this table and look at the, the accounts in group zero. But that's pretty hard to do. Uh, I just see London Fashion Week, Alexa Chung, Cisle Fashion, Bottega Veneta, Burberry, Mexico. So it's all related to Mugler, to, uh, to uh, high street fashion. I think that's how it is called. Louboutin. Okay, so that's community zero. Community one is about, oh, it's co so community one is really an artifact. We have just three members, uh, two museums, well, two museums and and uh, and and a non non profit. Community two is super small as well, just four members. Uh, four members uh, from Asia, it seems. Yeah, from Korea. Community three is Taylor Swift, Stephen Fry, Dylan Show, Courtney Kardashian. Okay, so. Um, TV stars and TV personalities. Community number four has just two members. Honestly, what I would do at this stage is just uh, delete these nodes because they are completely, uh, well, I will not delete them right now, but probably uh, they are artifacts. So a key takeaway I, want, I, uh, I wanted to share with you at this moment is that when you collect a network in the wild, you know, the, 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 a network reconstructed from data that you collect through an API in big volumes, uh, even if you really try and, and, and use the best met method you can to collect a network, which is the, at the closest to uh, what matters to you, you always grab some noise or some artifacts, just because uh, the algorithms that uh, that you created to perform this data collection, uh, they can't discriminate uh, 
so well that uh, you know you will just get uh, useful data. And one way to filter out unwanted or irrelevant um, data is exactly as what, as we did through community detection. We, I mean, it's a matter of judgment, but I would say that. Uh, identifying super small communities that you know, and when you look at the member of these communities, you know it has nothing to do with your core subject. Um, what you can do is just delete these nodes. So of course you have to do that in a way that is respectful of, uh, you know, of the flow of working with data. You should never, um, uh, you should never never delete the the raw data you collected in the first place, so you should version your data set but in the in one of these versions you can really delete these small communities where obviously uh, irrelevant nodes were collected uh, so I just deleted these two oh uh, it asked me for confirmation for deletion so yes. And let me go back to community one. I think it had just three members. Uh, museums, so maybe interesting, but it seems to me it's not super related to the account timing I have uh, used as a seed. And these this four neither. So I just deleted this. So I find it super interesting, community detection as a way to clean um, a network. Again, I, I would insist that it's a step that should be documented in your, uh, in your flow of work, in your workflow. Uh, community five, let me see. Community five, Lancome, Mil Milani Cosmetics. I'm not a specialist of this industry, but basically uh, cosmetics everywhere. So community one was a uh, country member. It was uh, yeah, high street brands. Then we had the TV stars and TV personalities. Now we have in community five, we have cosmetics. So maybe some of you can uh, try and guess the kind of account we are analyzing. And the last no, not the last. Community six is about so Spanish names, social media about social media. I'm not a Spanish speaker, so my well, Spanish accounts from a variety of of uh, topics. Okay, community seven is about, well, it seems pretty, that's from Indonesia. Indonesia, so it's, I, I would just delete it because it has nothing to do with, it has to do but super remotely with the, with the account I was analyzing. And community eight is Japan, Japan or Chinese? I don't know, I think it's Chinese. Community nine is about writers, famous writers like New York Times best-selling writers. And community 10 is, oh, it's Google, uh, Google accounts. So, This is what we have. So what I would do at this stage is really delete all the communities that I know to be completely uh, irrelevant to the topic uh, I've, uh, I was interested in. So even the biggest communities, like the Spanish community is, has probably some relevant accounts, but they are completely uh, buried in, in a, in, in a bigger group of irrelevant accounts, so I delete them. Okay, we we are left with community five cosmetics, community three 
um, superstars and community zero, which is high street fashion. So we can go back to the overview. I would actually rerun uh, a community detection algorithm at this stage. Um, so that these three big communities we've kept uh, can be broken down into uh, smaller communities. So I rerun that. It finds six communities. And if you go back to the data laboratory, you will see that the modularity class column has been uh, you know, erased and replaced by the new values of this community detection we have just performed. So I will not look again at the, you know, at what are the members of which community. Uh, I'm pretty confident that I did a, a good pass, first pass at, at cleaning and removing irrelevant accounts uh, because my data collection in the first place was a bit too uh, too wild and, and noisy. So I can switch back to the uh, to the oval to the uh, overview. I'm gonna center the graph and the graph has changed as you see because uh, I have removed nodes. So what we see is the remaining and the remaining is uh, uh, I'm not super surprised is concentrated in the in the biggest region we had identified. So let's run the fourth atlas algorithm again. Yeah, so it's a big blob. We can basically try and expand it by applying, uh, by changing the scaling factor. So from two, which is the default to, well, let's try 50. So 50 is big. I can use the wheel of my mouse to uh, zoom out and the right click to pan. So we see, well, we see, we see that we have probably one, two, three sub communities and, and a couple of communities in the bigger core. Let's see, let's visualize them now. So I stop the, the layout and I will color the nodes according to which community they belong to. So to do that, you go to the app appearance panel. Uh, the appearance panel has a partition submenu, which you click, and in the drop-down menu, you can color the nodes according to different attributes. Uh, so you have to choose an attribute that uh, uh, corresponds to a category, right? Otherwise, uh, it doesn't make uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So, as I said, we want to show the groups or the communities uh, in different colors. So, I choose modularity class, which is the technical term for community. It suggests uh, already a pre preset uh, preset colors, which are fine with me. Uh, a lot of uh, congratulations. I think it's Mathieu Jacomi and, and others who, who worked on these color palettes to make them uh, basically robust. And uh, so I'm gonna keep them as they are and I just click on apply. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, as you see, no surprise, we see that we have three peripheral communities, but the, 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 the core is made of sub-communities, like three main ones. Um, if you are fancy or just if you prefer, you can click on the light bulb icon on the bottom left of the canvas to switch to, uh, uh, to this background. And that can make uh, the colors a bit more shiny or easier to I meet. Mean, it's more comfortable in some cases. So um, again, uh, uh, what you could do is go back to the data la la laboratory and eyeball, you know, eyeball the the nodes per 
modularity class to try and guess which uh, community they define. Uh, so that would be the thing to do, I suppose. But just for the sake of showing the next steps, what you can do as well, and it's for the same purpose, you know, trying and understand which, what are each community about. Uh, you can just uh, show in uh, show the biggest nodes in each community. So let's show the biggest nodes for the full for the whole network first. So this happens in appearance, and I would uh, go to ranking. You want to rank the nodes the nodes sizes according to this or that uh, attribute. So it depends on which attribute you have. Degree is degree means the number of connections that a node has. So we can try this one. It's pretty common. It depends on what your data represents, but uh, it's, it's a good suspect. It's not the best in this case, uh, but let's see what it does. Degree. We want the nodes that are that have more connections to be bigger on the screen. So I just I was in ranking. I chose degree, and it shows me colors. But I uh, I don't want to change the colors. I want the colors to represent communities. So I switch. In this set of icons, I choose the second one from the left, the one that that uh, shows this. Uh, concentrated cycles, that's for size. And now it shows me a, a single size. No, I want to rank them. So I click again to, on ranking and I click again on degree. Okay, so now everything I need is gonna rank my nodes, the size of my nodes according to their degrees from a minimum size of one to a maximum size of four. I would prefer not four, but something like, so I'm go, go from, I'm gonna go from uh, two, uh, yeah, is it? Yeah. I think I, might, I have my shortcuts going in the way. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna just use the, I'm thankful for the, for the little arrows, I'm going to just do it. My keyboard is not uh, reacting. So just from minimum size of 2 to 20. And I click on Apply. And we see nothing, because 20 must be super small still. Or we see this one here. So we can, I'm going to change and do, well, but if I can't type, it's going to be super slow. I'm going to do 50 from two for the node that has the smallest number of connections to 50 here. Yeah, we see some nodes and this big one here is bigger now. Let me zoom in for you. Oh yeah, you see well. So what you can do at this step to see, you know, what are these big nodes? Uh, so let me show you different uh, ways. What you can do is click on this icon, which represents, uh, and again, in my next uh, Twitch sessions, I'm going to have zoom in uh, capabilities, but at this point, uh, uh, the, I just screwed it up. But the, the icon that shows a mouse pointer with a question mark. So you click on it, and it actually opens an edit panel where you're going to see all the information about a node when you click on it. So I'm going to click on these big ones, big one, and it shows Chanel. OK, so Chanel is an important node in, uh, in, in the network. Let's go and find another one. This one is still out there. Mac Cosmetics Clinic. Oh, we have bigger ones here. Ragbon, Zach Posen. Well, I'm not a specialist of this industry, but I suppose they are super famous. Marches are fashion. Uh, 
CFDA, the Council of Fashion Design, anyway. So you can either do that, Oh, there is a spam right in the chat. That's funny. How, how do I ban someone? Let me try. Ban. Super done. So you can either do what I did, and you know, just to get a quick sense of major nodes like that, you can do that, or you can uh, actually show the labels of the major, you know, of the biggest nodes. And to do that, uh, what you can do is click on this super tiny icon on the on, in the bottom right of the canvas. So you click on it and it expands a bottom panel. In this panel, you click on labels and you select node. So suddenly, maybe you don't see it that well, let me zoom in, but all the nodes labels have appeared. And what you want is basically resize the labels so that the labels of the smallest nodes stay small and we see only the big labels of the big nodes. And to do that, it's super simple. We just stay there and instead of in the size menu, instead of scaled, we choose not size. And, and we can even give them the color of their nodes. Oh, yeah, that's going to be harder to read. Let's stay at in black. And now we can have a look, a new look. So we see Chanel. OK, so again, I right click on the on my mouse to, to pan. We see Lacoste, Balenciaga, Lanvin, Chloe Fashion, uh, Yves Saint Laurent. So basically, that's a super uh, useful way to understand uh, you know, how are your communities uh, constituted. Uh, before we move to the, oh, and I think we're going to be over, over time, but I'm going to speed up because I would really like to, to stay at one hour. So, uh, if we are over time, I'm, I, I hope we're going to be just five minutes late. So before we move to, uh, how to export that, which I think is super in interesting already as a first, uh, step, uh, there is something super important, which is that you can in Gephi easily uh, concentrate on one region of the network and work on it independently from the rest of the network. So let me explain. Let's say you want to, uh, let's say that we are interested in this light blue uh, community. We want to understand better uh, what this is, even if, to be honest, I have no, it seems I have no clue about it, but let's take it anyway. Um, so you can isolate it from the rest of the network, and let me show you how. We are still using the editor's uh, mode, so we, let's click on one node of this blue community, and we see in the, you know, in the edit panel, we can see that it it has a modulate, moder, modularity class of four. So all the blue, light blue nodes are the ones from the, modul, the, the community number four. So I switch to the filter panel. And let me remember, yes. And what you have here is on the top, a catalog of filters. And at the bottom here, the area where the filters that you choose are going to be applied. So let's choose a filter from the catalog. I just expand the list. I see partition. Partition is another fancy name for um, basically uh, categorization. So I select the filter on modularity class and I drag and drop it at the bottom of 
of the screen. And now it offers at the very bottom of the screen there, it offers to highlight this or that community. You know, I, as you see, I, I select and unselect it. So I just want the number four, that's the one I've selected. And that's super helpful, it gives me the color of it. And then I just click on filter. And when I click on filter, all the rest of the network is uh, filtered out. So why do that? It's not just for the convenience of having all the rest being, uh, you know, of, of being removed. It means that once I am in this view, anything I'm going, any function I'm going to apply is going to be applied to these nodes only. So, for example, if I want, I can run a layout on these nodes, and this region is going to be is going to be reorganized, just taking into account the nodes and the connections that are visible on screen, not the ones from the full network. Um, let me try that. Not super useful. I agree with you. Uh, but more importantly is going to be helpful to, uh, uh, for example, uh, resize the nodes inside it. So if I do a resize of the nodes, it's going to take as a minimum value and as a maximum value only the nodes present on screen. So yeah, I suppose it doesn't make a big difference. Well, maybe it should. I'm curious. It should have. Hmm. Well, I might be. Hmm. Why don't I see any change here? Um, just for safety, what you can do is, I'm not sure it's completely ignoring the rest of the network since nothing changed. So to make sure that you are working on this sub network, this sub region alone and only, what you can do is in the filters panel, uh, choose an icon that says export the filtered graph to a new workplace. So let's just click on that. And you should see at the uh, top left of the screen, <laughs> workspace number two, and I see nothing in it. Ah, yes. So when you see nothing, it's not, it's not it might not be a bug, it's just that the, the the network was placed outside of the canvas. And as I said before, just clicking on this uh, little uh, magnifying glass helps you uh, concentrate the network uh, at the center of the stage. And now, you know, workspace number one, let me, I'm back to the original network. I, I stop the filter, which brings us back to the original network. So in workspace number one, this is where we started working originally, but I can now uh, switch to workspace number two, where I have a copy of this uh, light blue community that I that I isolated with uh, filters. And so let's go and try to resize from two to, oh, it works. The keyboard works. I don't know why. Uh, let me show the labels. Oh, that's really ugly. What you can do in this case when the labels overlap is apply a layout that is made exactly for that. It's called label adjust. And there is a second one as well, I think. But just label adjust is good. It moves the nodes so that the labels uh, 
stop overlapping. And there is another one which is called Novolap, right there, actually. Slightly different, same effect. Okay, so I'm not a specialist of this community. Somebody can, uh, uh, somebody can, uh, uh, maybe somebody knows about what this community is. Uh, Nicolas, tu as lancé, you, tu as lancé un raid. Je sais pas ce que ça veut dire, mais uh, interesting. Um, so maybe somebody, oh, Colette Paris, okay. Uh, but uh, basically, it seems that it's the mostly non-French. Ah, okay, c'est ce que je pensais, Nicolas. Je... C'est sympathique. Thank you. <laughs> Trying my best. Et Nicolas, I don't know if you were there, but the first 15 minutes, I had. No sound, <laughs> uh, and my zoom doesn't work. So uh, a real, uh, un vrai bizutage. Um, okay, so it seems that this region is made of um, fac fashion brands, which are uh, uh, like international fashion brands. I, I can't be more specific than that, but it's different from. Let's go back to uh, workspace number one. Is different from the, oops, not this one. Yes, it's different from this community where uh, the brands are uh, more uh, famous, at least to me, and I would say concentrated in the uh, in France, the UK, and the US, I would say. So back to workspace two. Merci, Nicolas. C'est très gentil. Et merci pour le raid. C'est sympathique de voir des gens. Um, so contrary to this second community, which uh, which at least to me seems a bit more heterogeneous, but I, I might be I might be wrong. Okay, so what did we do? Uh, a layout and then a community detection and then some uh, coloring of the network to show the different communities. And then we recite the nodes according to um, an attribute, in this case, the degree, uh, which means the number of connections. Um, then we filtered the network to keep one community in view, the, the one we see here. And the last steps, would consist in uh, getting out of Gephi and uh, and uh, communicating some uh, results, some visual results. That happens in different ways. That can be done in different ways. One super straightforward way is to just do a screenshot of your network, uh, of your screen. So to do that, there is a, actually a screenshot icon at, uh, I think you can see it at the bottom left, bottom left of the canvas. And before clicking on it, you can actually change the parameter by clicking on the very small down, uh, down arrow that opens a configure uh, settings panel. And there, and yes, it hasn't changed. Uh, there you can increase the um, resolution of the screenshot. The, the interesting thing is that, so the default is uh, 1,024 in width and 768 in height. Uh, if you double these values, the, the screenshot is gonna be uh, more uh, precise or high, high resolution. So, but if you, it, of course, the values need to stay in uh, in sync. So if I, I double from uh, from 1,024 1, to 2,048, then I have to double the eight. And the funny thing is that it doesn't do it for you. So you just have to do some uh, 
uh, quick uh, mental uh, calculations, and it's uh, 1532, quelque chose comme ça, 36. 768 times 2, I would say 1536. Ah, thank you, Veronica. OK, thank you. <laughs> I'm relieved. Uh, 768 x 2, je pense, ça fait 1536. Mais let's try it. And you can also increase the anti-aliasing factor uh, again for for a uh, precision but be aware that it's going to take a lot of time to uh, it's going to take a lot of time to to process if you increase these values and especially the anti-aliasing value uh, it creates a png that is exactly what as you see uh, here um, but you have another way, which is the preferred way, which is to move to the preview panel, which you can access um, through this menu at the top left. And that's the one that we've seen at the beginning of this uh, session. So you click on refresh. And then you can tweak all the parameters. You see the labels have disappeared. Uh, so what you can do is... Uh, 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 reset and modify to your taste all the values uh, for colors, for uh, thickness of the borders, uh, the you know the font for the labels, etc., etc., etc. And each time you do a modification, so let's say we want to show the labels, I just select show labels on the left. Each time you do a modification. Nothing appears on screen. You have to hit refresh at the bottom left to see the effect. So it's really different from working in the overview. Um, the modifications you do are not immediately visible on screen. You need to have this modification, refresh, modification, refresh, um, which is not super uh, convenient, I find, but um, that's how it works. And then once you are, you are happy with the result and they are clearly I'm not happy with that. How could I do? I think we have to simply reduce the size of the font. So let's try eight. Refresh. That's, well, that's super. That's much better. OK, once you are happy with that, you can export it. And the, the good thing here is that you can, so the, the sorry, the, the button to, to export is at the bottom left. And what you can do is export as a PNG file, but most importantly, as a PDF or SVG. And if you're not familiar with the, S with the SVG uh, set, uh, type of format, file format, an SVG can be edited. So you can open um, uh, the SVG file produced in Gephi. You can open it in a specialized software such as Inkscape, which is free, or Illustra Adobe Illustrator. And then the nodes and the edges and the text of your labels can be edited. So uh, deleted, modified for the colors, the size, the font, everything. Um, so that can be uh, super interesting if for the latest phase of your uh, of your um, of your workflow when you want to have something which is polished uh, before you communicate it to uh, to an audience. OK, so uh, that's it for me. Uh, the, the, let me wrap up uh, with uh, some comments on, on the on this streaming uh, initiative. Um, so the session we just did today is something I would like to replicate in every Wednesday um, for uh, for many 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 weeks, and and so I'm going to refine the format. But basically, the goal would be that we pick a topic for an hour, 
And that's why I've put the timer on the on the screen so that uh, we really try to not uh, spend hours on it. Uh, so for an hour, we investigate a specialized topic. This one was, for today was super broad, uh, you know, uh, gay free from A to Z for beginners. Uh, but I hope it's going to be useful, especially in replay for many um, beginners who just want to have an idea on um, how to work in Giphy and just to have the broad view. So that's done. And the, the, the next topics, the ones I have shown in the scheduling in the Twitch channel, uh, I think they're going to need to be much more specialized so that in an hour we can go deep in some specific and important issues. The one for next week is super important. It's how to create a network in the first place. Because as you see here, you know, we started with a network that we had, but most of, I mean, every time the network, we need to build it in the first place. And uh, so next week we're gonna review, uh, I hope a lot of methods that uh, help you uh, create networks. And I would really insist on click and point uh, methods. Thank you, Veronica. I was super glad to have you. Um, yes, so next week is, uh, I think is super important. And that's how I'm gonna try and choose the, the topics for the weeks after always trying to find something which needs explanation and that is useful to uh, many, many of us. Uh, so explaining plugins maybe, and also going and discuss uh, text mining, which is another of my, uh, of my interests. Um, and as you see uh, with this type of network, we are not super far from text mining. Um, uh, you can analyze text with uh, networks. So we're gonna discuss that. Uh, so, Alan, hi, and um, so the replay, I'm going to post it on YouTube, uh, try and find, uh, I'm going to, my alias, or how do you call that, my name on, on YouTube is, uh, and on social media is uh, Sencle, so or Clément Levallois, I can't remember, but uh, basically I'm going to post it on my YouTube uh, channel and it's going to stay live for seven days on Twitch, on my channel on Twitch. That's how Twitch works, at least for uh, people who are beginners in streaming like me. They allow you to have your, uh, your video uh, online for seven days on Twitch but I'm gonna repost it on YouTube to make sure it can stay forever. If you have any other question, don't hesitate. 